this. Hello and welcome to another JavaScript SEO office hours. Um, today we have two questions from YouTube and then uh, I'll open the floor for questions from the audience today. Thanks everyone who joined today. Um, for those who joined live, you can use the chat or the raise hand feature, or you can just like unmute yourself and ask a question uh, if you wish. Uh, for those of you who are new to the JavaScript SEO office hours, I do them roughly every two weeks. Uh, I try to iterate between different time zones uh, or make like accommodate to different time zones. And uh, there will be a YouTube community post on our channel where you can ask your questions asynchronously, or you can join the recordings by going to the link that we add to the uh, community post whenever the episode goes live, like the recording starts. Sweet. Today we have two questions. The first question comes from Ricardo Campacci. I hope that I pronounced it correctly. <coughs> he is asking about the differences between raw HTML and rendered HTML, and if that could cause crawling problems. No, and it has not much to do with crawling, but I see where you're coming from. And they give an example saying, um, for instance, using JavaScript to insert links inside the HTML rendered um, after the crawl instead of immediately showing those links already in the raw HTML could be a problem because Googlebot, for some reason, may not be able to locate these links that were inserted via JavaScript. Right in the video from uh, Aleda, we have this lovely um, Search Central lightning talk about the Web Almanac, uh, and he links to that. She specifically talks about the raw HTML versus rendered HTML. My question is, assuming that JavaScript has been implemented correctly, could this discrepancy between raw HTML and rendered HTML really be that problematic? No, normally, no. Because if that were the case, then the obvious consequence would be to advise against using client-side JavaScript unless you really can't do without it. That's, to be honest, that's generally a good advice nonetheless, because JavaScript is really expensive on the client side and also less predictable on the client side. So it's not a bad suggestion to suggest that. <clears throat> and the thing is, my opinion on the raw HTML versus render, rendered HTML topic is that there are no strong reasons to avoid creating or adding, inserting, removing, changing content with JavaScript in the HTML and the rendered HTML. That's perfectly fine. That's exactly why we are rendering. That's the whole purpose of the rendering step. Um, there are, however, certain scenarios where that is not a great idea and can, can cause problems. One scenario being if I have a huge site and I am um, basically limited by crawl budget for my site and I want new pages to be picked up as quickly as possible, then we are looking in the raw HTML already as a first step for links that we could push back to crawling. So we can discover, discover, not crawl, not index, not rank, discover links quicker. And then after rendering, we do that again. So if your links only show up after rendering, then that might cause a few hours um, delay until we discover the link and can queue it for crawling. So if you are really concerned about that, then make sure that the links you really, really care about are in the rendered, uh, sorry, are in the raw HTML as well as the rendered HTML. Another case, where JavaScript content or JavaScript generated content can interfere with us or with search engines in general um, is when you change information such as meta tags or, um, or canonicals and create a misleading situation. So to give you an example, link rel canonical. Let's say like we see one URL, let's say example.com slash YOLO. Uh, in the raw HTML as the canonical. But then in the rendered HTML, it is example.com slash products question mark ID one, two, three, both pointing to the same content. But now we are getting mixed signals because depending on how quickly, so things are happening in parallel in Google search on our infrastructure anyway. So the canonical extraction might happen multiple times. And then we might have one canonical that you submit in the raw HTML and then a completely different one in the rendered HTML. Now, which is the one that we should pick? We don't know. There's no 
right and wrong answer here because maybe it's the rendered HTML that is correct, but maybe that one is actually an accident and the raw HTML is the right one. Then we basically are weakening the signal that we're getting anyway. So we might decide for a completely different canonical whatsoever um, or just like flip-flop between both of them, which makes reporting in Google Search Console really hard. So that's not a problem per se, but it leads to problems. So you want to avoid sending us mixed signals. Another thing is that um, if you are dealing with, or if you're changing with uh, the meta robots with JavaScript, that might have unforeseen or unexpected consequences. So for instance, if your raw HTML contains uh, index and follow meta robots, and then you change that to no index with JavaScript, that's fine because we will see the page, we will render it, uh, and then the rendered version has a no index, so we will not index that, you're good. But the other way around, when you have a no index in the initial HTML, in the raw HTML, and not in the rendered HTML, we won't even get to the rendered version because we are getting the raw HTML, we look at the no index, and we're like, oh, this page doesn't want to be in the index, so we don't even render it. So we will never see that the JavaScript removes that no index, and then it doesn't work as you want. It's like, well, but why? The no index is being removed by JavaScript, but somehow Google still sees a no index. Yeah, that's precisely because there is a no index in the raw HTML. So there are lots of edge cases like this where this can be problematic. But for instance, changing title tags or meta descriptions or whatnot, it's fine. Adding links, removing links, changing links with JavaScript, all of that is generally fine. Um, there is no hard and fast rule to say, like, that's a problem. It was just interesting. We wanted to see how much of a difference JavaScript makes. That's just an interesting fact. That's why uh, it was in the Web Almanac. It was an interesting question. It's like, oh, so um, we noticed that a bunch of, of content changes with JavaScript. That's uh, no valuation or no judgment there. It's just like, oh, that's an interesting observation. Similar to how it was observed, how uh, hreflang implementations are different on mobile uh, than they are on, on desktop. Is that a problem? Maybe, maybe not. Right. So it's it's not no judgment uh, statement there. It's just like um, a finding that they made when they were running the analysis for Web Almanac. And I think it's interesting to see that JavaScript is actively being used to change content, but it's not a problem per se. Like we are, we as in Google Search are working well with JavaScript. Um, there shouldn't be any major issues with that. Now, there's this entire other conversation to be had <clears throat> about should you use JavaScript on the client side for all sorts of things that you could do without it? My opinion is no, because usually it has a performance impact, and that is potentially something that you want to avoid, I would say. Awesome. Then we have a question from AJ uh, Galewale. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. I'm trying. When a publisher implements AdSense JavaScript code, it shows more problems on the mobile PageSpeed tool than before adding AdSense. So it affects basic web performance and increases bounce rate, which will affect SEO. It is really strange that one Google service is not following the basic speed test guidelines. Do you have suggestions for pub publishers using AdSense JavaScript code to improve? That's a question for the AdSense team, not really for me. Um, <clears throat> it's not strange to see that. It's just what happens. Uh, even Google products are not an exemption. Like, Why would we give preferential treatment to Google products? If it would be a third-party ad network that is not performing uh, up to best practices, we would do the same thing. So the Google products are no exemption. Using a Google product does not mean that it necessarily f uh, follows all the guidelines. That being said, I'm sure AdSense is using on improving that. Uh, is not using. It's working on improving that and making sure that your websites won't be hit uh, with performance problems when you are using it. Definitely reach out to them. Um, you probably have an account manager that you can talk to, or you just use their support or support forum. Um, to check what is their recommendation uh, and what are their best practices to avoid performance issues. Because I am afraid I am not uh, in the AdSense or Ads world. With that being said, we have uh, exhausted our YouTube questions. I think last time we used the raise hands feature, that was nice. 
So um, if you want to do that, or if you want to use the, the messages in the chat, uh, feel free to ask me a question. The floor is yours. Yeah, Dave is raising his hand. Hi, yeah, it's uh, looking at your inspection tool uh, when you're inspecting something, not necessarily, not a live one, but obviously what's on it. Sometimes you'll see the resources, you can open up, you can look at the resources, and you'll see the same kind of other errors and things. Are the reasons for those, could they just be sometimes a map render, Google thing, I don't actually need to get that. You know, I tend to see a lot of things like images, would that still be recorded as other error? Or does other error in there mean that actually we wanted to get this resource at this time, but we couldn't mm -hmm. for whatever reason? Normal, very good question. Thank you very much. Normally, the other error um, is something that just is a transitive thing. And especially with images and uh, certain resources like um, tracking pixels or ads, uh, we usually don't fetch them. So for images, for instance, image search fetches them. And they have their own system of how they do that. So we are, we are acknowledging that there is an image, um, the alt text that is attached to it and where it is positioned on the page, but we don't really necessarily directly care for the image content. That's a matter of image search then. So not fetching images with another error, that's OK. That's not, not nothing that you need to worry about. Um, same goes with non-essential uh, resources, such as tracking pixels and ads and stuff. Um, if you see one that persists for quite a while, it's worthwhile checking what's happening on the server. If it gets requested, if it gets requested, what happens then? Does it time out? Is it taking a very long time? But normally, you would then get a more helpful and, and specific error than other error. Very, very good question. All right. Any more questions? <clears throat> Three people contemplating. Again, you can also use the chat if that is more comfortable or convenient. If there are no further questions, then I'll use the opportunity to like ring the bell for tomorrow's uh, Twitch stream at, I think it's 5 p.m. Uh, CEST, so the Central European Summer Time or Daylight Savings Time. Um, where I will get back into robots.txt parsing for Node.js. I'm slightly nervous about that, but it'll be probably fine. We'll live. Oh, Mihai, yes. I thought of one. Um, so um, I'm curious whether is it a problem if for a website that uses different uh, mobile and desktop um it serves different mobile and desktop mm -hmm. html and the way it builds the html uh might use javascript might not use javascript mm -hmm. based on whether it's mobile or desktop if it's trying to do that without necessarily detecting the viewport but the user agent instead mm -hmm. um so serve even if the viewport is a desktop viewport but the user agent is detected as being for example googlebot smartphone Mm -hmm. uh, and serves the mobile version. Can that lead to any issues, or should the viewport be taken always taken into account when deciding whether to serve a separate mobile version? I think that doesn't really make a difference as long as the content is there and probably roughly equivalent to what you want to see. Obviously, if we are not seeing uh, content on both the desktop version and the mobile version, because you're always serving us the mobile version and that one is incomplete, then we won't be seeing that specific part of the content and we might be missing part of the link graph of the page. But in general, it should not be a huge issue. I would recommend taking the viewport into account because sometimes weird things happen. Uh, I remember a couple of years back, I was working from my phone using a Bluetooth keyboard and then an external screen that I was casting to, and then getting like mobile versions of everything, even though my viewport was gigantic because it wasn't uh, like a, I think it starts like a 32 inch screen or 35 inch screen, even because it was a TV, it wasn't an actual screen. Um, that was annoying. But it's not like a Google problem specifically. Good question. OK, so the user agent should be enough to take into account uh, when serving 
uh, when using separate mobile version and severing the for, mobile version. For us, that should be a count. In general, I would argue that you should do viewport uh, detection rather than sure. user agent detection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and one more thing regarding uh, what you mentioned earlier, links and generating links and adding them post um, after the raw HTML is being served. Mm -hmm. um, if only if like a part of these links are served through the raw HTML and another part is served client side JavaScript rendering, mm -hmm. uh, can that generate any issues at any point? No, no. The only, as I said, like the only thing is that we will discover them later in the indexing run. So basically, we crawl, we discover links in the raw HTML, then you need to be rendered, or the page needs to be rendered, and then we are discovering the, the links that are being JavaScript injected. For small pages, uh, for small sites with like less than, I would say, like a million to 10 million pages, um, if you are lower than that with the amount of pages that you've got, you will never ever run into problems. And even the larger ones might only occasionally run into the problem that links get discovered later than they want to. Um, so no problem besides link discovery delay. Right. Um, these links in question are actually part of the main navigation. Uh, so they usually don't change in terms of, mm -hmm. so the discover wouldn't necessarily be a problem. I'm just no. curious whether it would be a problem in terms of how it, they pass ranking signals no. and everything else. Okay. No. So it's all the same. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Oh, Jacob was posting a follow-up question. Uh, are we talking about dynamic serving looking at UA? WRS caches resources, and that's OK. But do you cache URL using UA as a key? Um, that's a question that I, that I love the questions that are coming, because that's a question that I don't have the answer to. And that means that you've just given me a task for the next couple of days. Because I think, I think they might have separate caches, but I don't know. Because caching does happen within the crawling infrastructure, but I don't actually no 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 that's not no, that's not true. That specific cache that we are talking about, because you're talking about WRS, WRS has its own cache, which is interesting because so the <laughs> the architecture just like spinning the beans a little bit, the architecture is roughly that there is the WRS which caches nothing and has no network interactions whatsoever. And then there's like a layer around it. Uh, that's what the, I, I can't say the name, but there's like an, it's it's larger than the WRS. The WRS really is just the rendering service. Uh, and then there's like a, a slightly bigger layer on top of it, and that actually has prioritization, uh, error retry, um, quality of service guarantees, uh, caching. And it also interacts with a um, crawling subsystem to actually fetch things. And I don't exactly know how this caching layer, this caching component of that larger thing that wraps around WRS is actually organizing its cache. So that's a really good question. I would expect it to be different uh, per, per UA, but I don't know if it is. Very good question. It's an implementation detail in the end, but it's a good one. It's like I'm interested in these things. So very good one. Sweet. Ladies and gents. More ah, yeah, here we go. So one last one. Um one thing that I have seen is back to the canonical tag being changed and stuff like that. Um one thing I did see that I thought sent a bit wrong is that the the initial HTML that the, the developers had done sent out contained an empty canonical tag that then got filled in. Um, that seems like that that could be a bit fraud disaster, but would that actually cause trouble? Will Google see that the initial HTML canonical tag was empty? And gone, oh, that's obviously nothing. And then they fill it in. I mean, to me, it, it sounds a better solution just not to have it on at all if you can't prefix yeah. it. Then, I would, I would be with you on that one, uh, because I don't exactly know how we're doing this, but I think we are resolving URLs. And if the URL is empty, it might just basically self-canonicalize. Yeah. And if that's yeah. what you want, you're probably OK off. Like You might not fall into a hole uh, with that. But if that's not your intention, then you might have just given us 
the situation where you basically just have a URL, even though if you, you didn't, and then just change it. So like you're back uh, in a bad space. So that's, I would argue, yeah, you're right. It's probably better to not have a canonical tag. And I mean, if you are changing it anyways, that means that you're navigating the DOM tree to find the canonical tag and then place the value on it. What's the difference? in terms of just creating that canonical tag and injecting it into the DOM tree. So I would argue that that's probably a safer solution. Yeah. OK. Thank you, Martin. Very good question. Thanks, Dave. All right. Uh, hold on. There is, ah, hi, Dito. So any questions in the chat or use the raise hand feature? Or oh, we're slowly wrapping things up. I don't know. Let me let me check YouTube one more time because sometimes questions do arrive here after the fact, after we go on like five comments. I think that might no, that has been me. Okay, never mind. Ooh. Oh, okay. There's just chit chat in the chat right now. Uh let's see. Twitter. Does Twitter have any follow-up questions? I got one more. Yeah. Um, I um I don't remember how um how close the mobile friendly test tool is to the URL inspection tool in Search Console. This mm -hmm. this is slightly related to JavaScript, I guess. <laughs> um, in the sense that um we're working on a project where the main crawler is still the Google Desktop crawler, mm -hmm. and. I've noticed that this is likely because of some issues with certain links that on mobile aren't being rendered or loaded in any way. Uh, mm -hmm. So I assume this is one of the reasons why uh, we're in the last batch of being moved over to the mobile crawler. Um, and within the URL inspection tool, so the, the developers have implemented some fixes in order to try to uh, mm -hmm render the correct links uh, as, as similar to desktop as possible. Um, so trying to see if everything is works okay on Google's end, especially with these kind of user agent related uh, changes that they've done. Um, I'm still seeing the the your inspection test, a uh, live test result. It's still the desktop mm -hmm. uh, view. Uh, so I, and I assume unless we're being moved over to the mobile crawler, we're going to see the desktop yeah. result regardless yeah. of what we do yeah. here. Yeah. So is mobile is the mobile friendly test result a good alternative to use in order to see if Google bot is correct seeing what it, what we want it yeah. to see? Yeah. So there it's quite interesting. There's a there's a pipeline called the single URL inspection tools or suit or suit, depending on who you ask, I would say suit, um, which is kind of like unified. And the way that it works is so the rich results test and the mobile uh, friendly test, as well as the URL inspection tool and the live test are all using that pipeline. Now, the mobile friendly test, by its sheer purpose, always uses the mobile crawler, because that makes sense right? in that specific case. The URL inspection test uh, gives you whatever happened in actual, uh, like the, the view crawl page gives you whatever happened in the actual um, uh, indexing run. So that's either mobile or desktop, depending on if you're um, in a mobile first index or not. And the URL inspection to live test because it wants to show you specifically what would happen if the indexing pipeline would run, uses also that setting, like depending on if your site is switched over to MFI or not, um, it might just give you the desktop or the, the, the mobile one. Rich results test lets you choose, lets you choose because they're making it always desktop or making it always mobile doesn't make sense because you might have different versions of your page and you might want to see both of them. So, but they're all basically, once you're through the interface, they're pretty much all the same, just with different settings. But with the reach results tool doesn't, uh, I mean, once you're moved over to the mobile crawler, um, doesn't the reach results um, and structured data interpretation 
Isn't it always based on the mobile version? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, but it's the uh, yes, but that that you would see in the URL inspection tool in the rich results testing tool in the rich results test. That's what I was speaking about. You yeah. can choose. You can always choose. Which yeah, but uh, which why? One you would like. Because you might want to see what happens in desktop. But Google wouldn't use the structured data that's if even if it's different wouldn't google use, you still use the mobile uh, structured data even for desktop rich snippets no 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 it would not but you might still mm -hmm. want to see what what the desktop crawler sees and what the mobile crawler sees especially if you're in the transition period between mfi and not sure mm -hmm. but once you're on the mobile crawler um so you can still expect a somewhat amount of crawling from the desktop I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. At least for a transition period, I'm not sure if we'll ever like stop it at some point, but I'm sure. pretty sure for for a while we'll will not stop crawling with desktop. Yeah. Cool. All right. Any other questions? Simon. All right. In which case. Ladies and gents, it has been a huge pleasure. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for everyone watching this wonderful video. Um, I'll put this video up probably uh, later today, and then uh, we will see each other again next week. No, in sorry, in two weeks. <laughs> awesome. Thanks a lot. Stay safe. Stay healthy, everybody. Bye. Cheers, Martin. Bye. 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 Cheers, Mihal.